getting an amateur radio license in a week, episode two. The goal here is to find the most direct path to learn all the things we need to know to get access to the airwaves and become worthy Spectrum citizens. I'm Pat Deegan, president of Psychogenic, and I want to play with radio as soon as possible. So I'm saying we can all do this quickly, but I want to underscore who I'm addressing these videos to. Basically anyone who would watch any of the other videos on my channel here. Those who enjoy fact-based knowledge and have already invested the energy to understand some electronics and the basics of physics. If you don't know what a capacitor is, you won't get that here, but you will find it in some some of the resources I'll be sharing, so don't leave just yet. So at this point, it's all about defining the plan and the tools we can use. I need some accredited examiner to perform the qualification exam and a roadmap to land me comfortably in that seat. Turns out the local amateur radio club has a 10-week class that's been underway since January and actually ends this month with the qualification exam. I've written them to see if I can just piggyback on the exam portion. We'll see about that. In the meantime, I started doing some research for resources, tools, and materials. In the US ham world, the ARRL is the bee's knees, and were I a United Statesian, I would definitely get some of their study guides. Up here in Canada, the rack is where it's at. And they recommend this study guide, which I've already ordered. Now there's tons of stuff online, which I'm still sorting through, but the first thing to do is figure out where you stand. The test questions for these exams are all public, and there are online quizzes you can find easily. I actually found two great little programs to use on my computer, Ham Exam for US Amateur Radio and Canadian Ham Exam. These both run under Linux on the command line. The Ham Exam program includes a few figures and just works. The Canadian Ham Exam requires you to download the Question Bank CSV from the government but at least that ensures you have the latest and greatest set. So after a few trial runs of both, the result is that with an electronic foundation, you can pretty much pass these right away using what you know, common sense, and a bit of luck. But I'm not here to half-ass or take chances. I want to know it all. And the kicker is that in Canada, if you pass basic with honors, some highish grade, then you immediately get access to all the amateur bands, including the low frequency stuff that travels furthest. So while doing the exam, I made note of everything that was easy and everything I kind of stumbled on or guessed. That the basic EM physics, I mean, uh, you know, it's wavelength and frequency conversions. Uh, electronics, yeah, basic, basic. Ohm's law, power stuff, maybe a little bit of what's a decibel. International phonetic alphabet, okay. In terms of what I actually need to learn, what I need to focus on and, and figure out. Regulations, limits, uh, authority, stuff like that. What are the exact bands, uh, you know, who does what. Antennas, I, I don't actually know that much about antennas. Uh, Yagi and quad and whatever, but okay, gotta check that. Propagation, okay, this is waves going through or bouncing off things. I know a bit, I don't know as much about the uh, stratosphere, ionosphere, whatever, as uh, you would hope. Band and frequency specific, so the bounds and and, and you know, there's no logic to it. It's just about agreement between countries and, and all that kind of stuff. So here we put Morse code, here we put whatever. Okay. Conventions, uh, etiquette, Q codes, uh, RST, like reports of signal strength, uh, band plans and, and what, you know, what's government decided and what's decided, you know, between the amateurs. Tubes, vacuum tubes. I haven't used vacuum tubes. So that's gonna be where I'm gonna be focusing. It's probably also where I'm gonna be finding the most uh, surprising and interesting stuff to report. So uh, I'll get into that now. As part of the greater family of hackers, amateur radio enthusiasts are a combination of curious, playful, and technical. And that seems to lead to an abundance of sharing of information. After trawling the vast internet for a few days and consuming a ton of content, I've come up with a carefully curated list of resources I can recommend. First on the list is Dave Kassler. This man has contributed an enormous amount of knowledge to get us up to speed on all things radio. Sometimes it feels like he's an ARRL manual vendor, but I have to say his section by section recaps of these books are invaluable no matter which country you're studying in. It's also fun how you can use the color of his shirts to carbon date when each section was filmed. Finally, the Ask Dave archives are a treasure trove of material on many, many topics. Of course, when it comes to regulations and such, Kessler's videos are US-centric. For Canadian amateur radio, B3OSH taped a whole series of talks over a number of weeks, and these have some pretty good info. They had some issues with sound on a number of occasions, including one whole video without a soundtrack. And there's a lot of interaction from the peanut gallery. So you may want to watch these on 2x the playback speed like I did. A great resource is YLab, a makerspace in Richmond Hill, Ontario, that has a whole section on amateur radio license training. They've got quality videos, downloadable PDFs of the slides, and online quizzes and cover everything you need for a Canadian ham radio license in a succinct and entertaining way. 
thumbs up to YLAP. They also pointed me to a great PDF from the Toronto Emergency Communication Group that helps a lot with something I'll get into later. Finally, for more general radio stuff, there are two I'm liking a lot. The Smoking Ape has a number of good ham radio videos, including basic intros, uh, stuff on DMR digital modes, and other things I'm interested in. Then there's Bob Duhamel's RSD Academy. It has you covered for all the basics of electronics and features some of the best descriptions of electromagnetism and antennas I've ever seen. Highly, highly recommended. That should be way more than enough to get you all set. I'm compiling a list of tricky or interesting topics I'm hoping to cover in the next video before exam day. Speaking of which, that radio club got back to me, but then left me hanging. So I reached out to an accredited examiner, and it looks likely that we'll be able to do a one-on-one -on -one qualification in the near future. I'll keep you posted. That's it for now. Stay tuned for the next video where I'll cover some finer points and uh, maybe have more details on the exam. Thanks for watching.